Hello and welcome back to Symptoms of Menopause Part 9. I hope everyone is doing wonderful and in today's video this is again number 9 and sort of an update as well. I was really uh, sharing how my diet and exercise in the last video has been a struggle and I had seemed to be just sort of stuck and not sure if what I was doing was working or not. And then also I had a new symptom up here, which I still think the verdict is out, but I'm also going to be sharing that with you as well. So welcome. I'm Jennifer, and if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by, especially if you are also struggling in perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, any phase of menopause. I am so happy you have come and found this video. I am trying to share my experience and hope, in hope, that it will at least just have a few women maybe not feel so alone and somewhere they can come and feel just not alone. So I have spent quite a bit of time so far feeling alone and not feeling like I had any support or even just no one really understanding. So if you are identifying with any of those things, those feelings or situations, you've come to the right place. So let's jump right into this. So I am going to say that for diet and exercise, I have been very frustrated. And I know most women, although I know I've talked to a lot of women who are not struggling, and that is frustrating because I feel like I'm definitely doing all the things right, like exercising, relaxing, meditation, Eating right, I've always ate a very clean diet, mostly vegan, um, mostly plant-based. I do have gone back and forth in life. I haven't been a vegan vegetarian my whole life, but most of, um, since my 20s probably, I have um, not incorporated meat into my diet, um, which I'm not saying anything bad about meat. Um, just for me, it was more of a, um, an ethical, maybe a decision. And yeah, I just didn't do well with meat either. It just didn't do well with my body. I would always get sick and just, again, had a hard time digesting it and not feeling good. So that was really what it started. And then, of course, I also just didn't feel good um, eating it. Yeah. So, but I still am following mostly a plant-based diet and very little processed foods, even though this has been difficult because with perimenopause uh, and any phase of menopause, we let me know if you can identify with the cravings are crazy. Now, we have always had to experience these cravings at PMS time, and it's not that much different, but I'd say even more so. Like, it comes in strong, okay? Like, especially alcohol and sugar. <sighs> can anyone help me out here? So, um, and I keep researching and reading that this is very common, and it's difficult not to give in. It's almost like you just don't have as much control as you had, maybe. So this has still been a struggle, but I want to happily report, happily, that I feel I have maybe lost a couple pounds. I'm not using a scale because I had to just throw that thing out. It's not helping, ladies. Like, that scale can send us down the rabbit hole, okay? Just ignore and put away the stool. I mean, the scale, the stool, <laughs> the scale. Keep the stool, get rid of the scale. So yeah, it's not a friend to me and I literally had to stop because I would jump on there so much and we know this ladies, We there are so many reasons for us to fluctuate in weight with our hormones going wacko 
it's a horrible tool for us. I believe the scales are a horrible tool for everyone because, and especially as women, um, I think men, if they regularly weigh themselves, you know, like at the same time, maybe once a month, it can be a good indication for them. But for us, not so much. So I had to ditch that and just, you know, go by how I'm feeling. And I have been so strict, so I'm not sure how long this will last, but doing the intermittent fasting, which I discussed in the last video, I've always intermittent fasted, you know, fasted more for spiritual reasons and because I like to meditate on an empty stomach. Um, I also like to exercise and do my yoga and Pilates on an empty stomach. So I've always done um, sort of intermittent fasting for years, um, since my 20s. You know, the whole not eating after seven, I also have some stomach, maybe gallbladder issues, or I cannot sleep if I have any food in my system. So this has helped because I won't eat late. So um, I've always practiced that. And then, so what I have done is to just, I thought to kick it up in gear, study and research has been showing that maybe cutting yourself off earlier in the day, like three o'clock, and you know, have your last meal by three o'clock. I know, I know. And then not eat earlier the next morning. So studies are showing that maybe that time for our Arcadian rhythm and that might be more of kind of like a better time for our body to burn efficiently. So I kind of have been trying to kick mine up. This is hard, guys. I've been having a really hard time. So three o'clock, no more food after that. That has been tough for me. And I'm such in the habit of not eating early in the morning that it's really been difficult. So most days I can't do three. Occasionally I've done three, but it ends up being by the time I'm done and have prepared myself something, it's like four, four thirty. So I have moved it up because I was more doing five to seven, anywhere in between there, I would make sure, I'd always make sure I'd have my last meal by seven. But, um, so now I'm doing, you know, I've tried to move it up um, and just slowly, I did it slowly, you gotta do it slowly. If you are messing with your hours of the intermittent fasting, just kind of work up to it. So I worked up to now, like I said, I haven't been able to do three, but it's more around maybe I'm done eating by 4.35. And then I'm trying to now force myself to eat earlier in the morning, but this has been difficult because I've just, again, been in the habit of not eating breakfast and skipping and going later. So what I have found, though, is I believe that may be helping or working. What I've also had to do is nip the snacking in between. So, because intermittent fasting, you've got to be careful because you can be like, okay, it's this time, uh, this is my eating window, and it's open, open the whole time, which therefore you cannot realize that you are really eating more, and you, it almost can mess with you to give you kind of this sense of, okay, this is my free eating period, I only have this much time, let me eat as much as I can, so the, <laughs> that's not working because... Don't think that you can't eat too many calories in an eight-hour window or even a six-hour window, okay? It is doable. Now, most of the time with intermittent fasting, people find that, you know, you're, um, you have a shorter amount of time to eat, so you don't end up consuming as much in that time. And this is true. But I think if you're a perimenopausal menopausal woman, this may not be true because... I tend to almost feel like, not that you're in a panic, but you're like, well, let me eat whatever I'm gonna eat now. And I found after I started to track it that I was eating more than I thought. And I still was having no problems getting the calories, too many calories in, maybe for me at this time. I think our calorie, you know, uh, what we need calorie-wise is still a mystery, I think, at this time. So back to what I'm saying, I'm just trying to update you on this, um, but I have found, so moving around the hours of the intermittent fasting and fasting longer periods of time. So sometimes I'm, I'm going 20 hours of a fasted period 
And also when I eat, I eat and then I don't snack or eat anything in between. And really what's happening is I pretty much I'm eating my smoothie, kind of an oatmeal smoothie bowl. I have done my smoothie in the past. I have the recipe here. I still do it. I mean, I've been drinking the smoothie. I love it. But I kind of changed it up where I do the smoothie, a little less ingredients in the smoothie, but then I pour it over my oatmeal. So good. So basically my diet has consisted of having my smoothie with the oatmeal and I'm doing still cut oats. Uh, and then um, I don't eat anything else, maybe a coffee, but I have had to, to completely omit coffee. Girls, tell me if someone can help here, but I, I've got the rosacea. I'll put that up in the box on which video that was, but I have the rosacea and I have noticed that when I drink the coffee, my face flames up red. So I'm pretty positive there's a connection there. And what a bummer. So I've been trying to kind of do like a, sort of like using the cacao uh, powder and kind of like a chocolatey more kind of um, elixir sort of. So I kind of will do that as well. And then I eat my meal, my last meal. So really, I'm just really eating two meals. Maybe sometimes like, yeah, not even a snack. I have found that if I add in a snack, it, for some reason, then I find myself wanting more. So I have found that by intermittent fasting for sometimes 18, 20 hours, and I have also incorporated a couple extra days of like a 42 hour fast. And this is not fun. I kind of like it though, just because it's so easy and I'm so worried about what my kids and you know family and husband are gonna eat that it's nice that I don't have to worry about what the heck I'm gonna eat. It's like, ah, forget it. I'm just not eating. <laughs> so let me know if you can relate to this. Oh my goodness. So anyways, I'm doing the smoothie, you know, oatmeal bowl, and then I have maybe a coffee or some sort of elixir, and then I have my meal, which basically is the last meal, dinner, whatever you want to call it, which usually consists of mostly vegetables, a little bit of grain, and um, maybe like a sweet potato, um, and then I try and do like tofu and, or legumes for that protein. And that's it, guys. And so, yeah, okay, maybe I've noticed a few pounds, but yeah, I'm not liking it. This is not fun. And I have not been having, you know, limiting. I don't drink a lot, but if I do have a beverage, alcoholic beverage, your girl needs some alcoholic beverage quite often, I'm noticing. Can you relate? Someone. Someone. Okay, so that's the update on that. But I want to report that I am losing a couple pounds, not a big dent. Also though, remember, I always I said this in my last video, I am lifting heavy. I am going heavy on heavier in my weightlifting. So I feel like my body is always gonna be, usually you're gonna be a little more up when you're doing that. But I'm not weighing myself, so who knows? Okay, so enough of that. Please tell me in the comment section below. Please let me know, this has been so upsetting and frustrating. I also want to report that I have stopped taking the Wellbutrin. And we'll probably do that on another video, but I'm just going to throw that in there. And I don't know if that's going to affect what it's going to affect, but it really wasn't working as much. And again, I'm going to do another video on that. Okay, so then I wanted to also discuss a new symptom that has popped up, came out of nowhere, and uh, ladies, and gentlemen, I have been suffering for the last month, okay? It just went away. What are we in? We're September. You guys, this just went away. I have been experiencing vertigo. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, so I have had vertigo in the past only one other time in my life, and it only lasted like maybe a day or two. Okay, you guys, I started to literally, I was in my swing. I used the yoga swing, love my yoga swing. Okay, so I'm swinging, I swing every morning, love to swing. 
So I le leaned back my head and literally I started to spin so fast, almost passed out. My husband had to help me off the swing. I was like black, okay, everything, almost like a blackout. And then it, it was horrible, you guys. So I have literally been spinning away for a month. Also, nausea. Oh my gosh, I am nauseous. So, okay, now the verdict's out. Okay, I've been doing my research now. Supposedly, they say that this is not, most people will say it's not like a menopause symptom, but then you'll read a lot of people will list the vertigo as a menopause symptom. So go figure. I... I'm not sure. So what I have found is that, okay, vertigo is a symptom rather than a condition itself, whatever that means. And uh, it's supposedly there is research and some thinking out there that the sudden decrease in estrogen during menopause, perimenopause, can cause a rapid decrease in estrogen receptors, which we know, which may disturb Octoconial, I believe, metabolism, and thus increase the prevalence of vertigo, B, or BPBV, which BPBV is an abbreviation for vertigo. But I believe there's two different kinds, not really different. They're both vertigo, but anyways. Okay, so, and that's just a thinking. There's nothing has been proven. And then also I have found that it could also be linked with rapid bone loss after menopause. Um, and they have done studies with women that are taking HRT, hormone replacement, are less likely to experience vertigo symptoms um, than women that are not. So you're more likely to experience vertigo if you're not taking HRT. So mm, yeah, I'm taking some HRT. So let me know anyone, everyone, please, like have you had vertigo? What are your feelings and thoughts about this? But guys, I just wanna tell you, I gotta cut this video short. This is getting way too long, but so just update on my diet and exercise, intermittent fasting. Also the vertigo, like what? But guys, this was bad. This lasted a month. I couldn't lay down flat. I had to be careful any which way I turned my head. I was spinning like numerous, numerous times of the day. Anytime I would move a certain way, I would have to stop and go, ah, like you're on a roller coaster. Oh my gosh, please stop, please stop, close your eyes. And then it would stop, but literally it was constant. It was constant, like all these different ways I would move or bend down or stand up. Let me know, help a girl out on, can anyone relate to this or let me know, but it has been disabilitating. I mean, I've been nauseous. I've been nauseous anyways with the menopause, but then the vertigo, cause you're spinning. So you're basically experiencing motion sickness. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I'm gonna stop here, but let me know. Sorry if this was way long and winded, but I just had to share that with you guys. It has been rough. So I haven't also filmed, it was really difficult. The last video I filmed, holy moly, because when I would lay down, I would spin. Awful. When you're sleeping, when I roll over from side to side, oh my gosh, I could go on this. I could go on and on about this for days, but let me know, ladies. I hope you're all doing wonderful. I hope you've gained something from this video, can relate to something. Please let me know. Please let me know in those comments down below. I love, love, love to hear your feedback, and I hope you're doing well. We gotta stay positive, okay? We're spinning, we're nauseous, we wanna drink, we wanna eat, we, we're gaining weight. I mean, we're not that fun to be around, but you know what? We're gonna get through, we're gonna get through this together, okay? If you are feeling alone, please come here. Do not suffer alone, please. And come and talk. Even just writing a comment and sharing your experience does wonders. So don't forget it. We're going to keep moving the body, though. We're going to keep eating right. And we are going to meditate and whatever you want to call it, relax the mind and the body. We're going to get through this, you guys. And we're going to get through it together. All my love. I'll be back soon.